this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Dude. Oh, welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mass making sessions. We are up to week number 129, would you believe? Now, I'm just going to double check what my pieces are called that we're going to be making this week. So we are making Crafty Cat double envelope pockets. Um, so for those people who don't watch my channel, we are doing reruns. So we did the first 100 weeks, we did the second 100 weeks. We're now doing a third lot of the 100 weeks, which is absolutely great because it helps to just, you know, replenish our stocks or, you know, maybe you've forgotten kind of pieces that we've made in the past. So, yeah, hopefully you guys also think it's, you know, it's a handy kind of recap and, um, you know, restock kind of, um, you know, uh, opportunity. So what are you going to need if you want to craft along? You are going to need some envelopes. Now, I've brought along a variety of size envelopes, right from 5 by 7 that's the largest, down to these teeny weeny ones, which are, what are they, 4 inches by 4 inches. Um, so envelopes that have got, obviously, an opening. So these aren't going to be any good for, you know, like scrap envelopes that you've opened that have come through the post where you haven't got the opening flap you need to have the opening flap so that's kind of the most important um you know uh criteria for your envelopes you are then going to need some paper to cover your envelopes now when i say paper you can use anything at all i'm using digitals and again i say this every week that's because that's what i predominantly have these days i will try and remember to tell you what digitals i'm using as i use them um and apologies if i forget at all uh, aside from that, you're going to need some scissors. If you like to use a paper trimmer or anything like that, then of course use a paper trimmer. I personally just like to use scissors. You're going to need some glue. Uh, I like to use the Anita's Tacky Glue um, for, you know, sticking down papery type items. That's my preferred glue. You may like to have a glue spreader. And again, I just use a, you know, an old card of some kind just to squish the glue down. I like to have a dried baby wipe on hand to just, you know, catch any excess glue that seeps out. That's kind of pretty much it for the basic um, foundation pieces that we're going to be making. After that, you may like to have some distress ink. I've got here some vintage photo. I've got my blendy tool, obviously. And then you may like to have any amount of things to decorate your pieces. Um, now, the other thing that I would just say is, and you will see when we make one of these, what I'm talking about here. You may like to have some planar paper to cover the insides or the outsides, depending on which way around you fold your little pockets, um, to create some writing space. Again, that's optional. You may prefer to actually have all, you know, all four sides decorated with decorated paper, you may like to have some blank papers. Again, up to you. So I've pulled in some papers with illustrations, which I didn't find particularly, you know, lovely illustrations. So I'm going to use that. But again, you can use whatever you like as long as it's plain. OK, let's get making one or two of these so that we kind of actually see how to make them. So I'm going to take, first of all, my five by seven envelopes. Now I'm going to put the papers on my lap for a moment to get them out of the way. So I've got my five by seven envelopes. Now what you're going to do, you're going to open them out like this. Okay, and then all you're going to do is you're going to tuck your pocket into the opening flap of the other envelope. And then you are going to glue these pieces down. Okay, so that's kind of all you're doing for the foundation of, you know, making these. Then it's up to you, really, whether you fold them out or fold them in. And you'll see why this, you know, potentially does matter, kind of which way you do them once we get making them. Now, the most tricky part of making these, I find, is once you've applied your glue, I sometimes find it quite difficult to actually slide my flap into the other envelope because the glue obviously kind of gets stuck onto the paper and then it doesn't want to glide in. So I'm going to just glue this portion first to hopefully make it slightly easier. And then once you've got it lined up to where, you know, where your folded line is, I'm then going to add some extra glue. Again, I'm just experimenting really because sometimes I do find them a bit fiddly to get in, 
you know to the other one so up to you really how you do these you could obviously glue this portion straight away or you could try like I am you know like this I'm just experimenting because like I say sometimes I find it a little bit tricky actually sliding the envelopes into the other one now once you've done that you're going to then spread your glue out and this is where obviously the glue spreader comes in handy and then the dried wipe okay so squish your glue down and you might like to turn it over where you can kind of get to it much easier like that okay now this is where I'm talking about you want to decide which way you're folding yours because what I'm going to do is put my decorative paper over here which is going to form the pocket and if you're wanting to use yours you know as a piece where you've got journaling space inside then you might prefer to reverse fold your envelopes if that makes sense so that your journaling space is on the inside and your pockets are on the outside so you know up to you really but I just think it's worth bearing that in mind when you're doing them <clears throat> so let's take some paper here <clears throat> sorry to have to keep clearing my throat and I will I will chat about this in a in a little while so I've got here oops my papers they've slipped off of my lap a little bit let me just pull them back oh. I mean luckily they couldn't slip all the way down because uh, I'm kind of wedged into the table right okay now I'm going to use some of I've got some new papers in my shop which I put in this week which are called Lovely Lavender Collection Papers so I'm going to use some of those because I've been very excited to use them so I'm going to take this and I'm just going to pop it down here now what I want to do is have this oops I like to just leave a little bit of an edge. So just going to go down there. Now, I personally like to cut my pieces like this. So I just fold and then I use the folded edge as my cut line. For me, I find this much quicker and easier than using a paper trimmer. But of course, you know, it's up to you really. You may find it easier to use the paper trimmer. Okay. Just pop that in the bin and then I go back over pop my piece of paper down onto the envelope and then I'm just going to fold it down to the approximate size of where I want to have it okay like that now I'm going to take this again use that fold as my guide cut that down here like that and then I'm going to try and get this portion I think as my other side so I'm just going to move it across to cut the other side down so in fact I'm not going to do that because it's going to move around so I'm going to just fold it using the underneath piece of paper as the template okay now these maybe look a little bit fiddly but honestly they are worth it and I promise they're not as fiddly as they you know as they may look so they're very easily doable and um yeah I mean I don't do anything unless it's easy so trust me if it's on here it's going to be like very easy to do very easy and actually not that fiddly because I can't stand doing fiddly things okay so you've now got your pocket pieces that you're going to put over your page so you don't want to have glue on this portion of the envelope if you see what I mean on the open flap because this is going to be your pocket and again you're going to see this in a minute so what I like to do is take this edge that's going to be along this edge run a line of glue or a bead of glue right down that edge okay then round all the other edges of my piece of paper that's going to be glued onto the envelope part itself 
and then here so I don't fill in the glue here because I could easily end up gluing this closed I'm going to just take my glue and then glue around my kind of inner section does that make sense so avoiding this part but putting the glue all over here so as when I put my piece of paper down it's going to be nicely glued down but I'm not going to have glued that open portion of the envelope if you see what I mean so spread my glue out again just grabbing my glue spreader and also my wipe so that I can just smoosh out the glue and also then catch the excess glue that's coming out okay squish that down like that okay and then I do exactly the same for the reverse so again want to just put the glue round down this edge this is what's forming my pocket okay then I just put it round the edge of the paper here and the only reason I do it like this is because obviously I want to make sure that my paper's glued to the you know to the far edges if you see what I mean then again avoiding this portion I just want to go in here lots of glue all around you know what's basically the you know the outside of the envelope okay so like that take my piece of paper oops, and then just pop that down like that oops like that okay so again smoosh that down like that okie dokie Looking good, looking good. Okay, squish it down. Like that. Oh, that looks good, sweetie. I do apologise, I'm filming this on the bank holiday Monday. And um, yeah, so obviously, you know, everyone's at home, although still in bed. But my daughter is, is up and about. She's just made herself, what is that? Is that a scrambled egg? Yeah. And what's the other stuff? Oh, a crumpet. And some... Yeah, sausages. Oh, sausages. Looks good. So then what you want to do is you cut along your envelope edge like that. Oops. Now I've cut as close as I possibly can to the envelope edge. So, you know, I've got maximum... Maximum envelope, if you see what I mean. Oops, like that. And then obviously you want to do exactly the same on the other side. Or, you know, the second envelope. Like that. Oops. Oh, like that. Okay, so then what you've got is you've got a little envelope pocket on each edge and it's a massive great big pocket to be honest but can you see that's why you want to just avoid gluing down you know that inner triangle kind of thing and that's it now this was where I said you may want to kind of have a think about which way you fold your envelope and whether you want to have plain paper or patterned paper because if I just pull in my plain paper oops like that so unfortunately my illustrate illustration is um showing through a little bit but you know that doesn't really bother me so here if i had folded it the other way my decorative paper would now be on the inside which is fine and maybe you know maybe sometimes you know you might like them like that but if you want like i do hopefully to have my journaling space on the inside then you're going to want to kind of like fold it down like this or fold, fold it this way round. So I'm just going to take this down here. Oops. Like that. Okay. And then let's just 
fold this over so that we get roughly you know how big we want it to be height wise as well oh my goodness that's that's not going to be good right let's do this in a slightly better way so cut this down here and this is where again you know you might not even want to have journaling space you may want to have more decorative papers inside you know so you've got sort of four decorated sides and that would you know that would be perfectly lovely too but this is just kind of giving you options and I think it's quite nice to have actually journal space on the inside so let's just take this down here Okay. oh my goodness sorry shoddy cutting going on again today. there we go oh my goodness what a mess right not done a good job of cutting this for some reason i all fingers and thumbs yet again there we go and yeah let's just move these bits of paper out the way okay and then we're going to just cut it open here where i just did that fold i'm moving over slightly to the fold because obviously it was going to be potentially a little bit big for the surface and that's it and then obviously you can put your journaling paper inside so you know it's up to you really i mean you may prefer to have yours like i say with decorated or decorative papers inside decorate them you know completely up to you because obviously you will have journaling space with whatever you put into the pockets so it's not kind of essential to have journaling you know plain journaling paper on the inside it's just, yeah, completely personal preference. Or you might prefer to do some and some. So, you know, some with the journaling space on the inside, some with decorative papers on the inside, you know. Maybe you might prefer to have some with the journaling space on the outside and then the kind of like surprise of the decorative papers on the inside. It's just, you know, complete personal preference. And like I say, you may want to do a mixture so that you have different pieces. So glue this one down here. But again, you know, if you've got any kind of papers like this, maybe with an illustration or something that you don't like that happens to be plain on the back, this is a great opportunity to be able to obviously use those types of papers and use up sort of, you know, what I would call scraps from that respect. Because obviously, you know, you're kind of covering up the illustration that perhaps you didn't really like so like that smoosh the glue down like that okay so aren't they just so gorgeous absolutely love them so you know there's not that much to them but they are a little bit time consuming to make so let's just run you through one more i'll try and do a smaller one that hopefully will be quicker i don't know whether being smaller will necessarily be quicker but Let's give it a try. So I've got these envelopes, which were those four by fours. They have got this sticky, um, you know, residue kind of thing on them. But what I'm thinking is if I put them in this way. And then I will have a decorative edge, if you see what I mean. Oops, now. I'm going to really muck this up, so I need to be very, very careful. In fact, I'm going to cut that off because, to be honest, that's throwing me off a little bit. It's going to make it very hard to work with being pre-gummed. So, yeah, let's just get rid of that. OK, that takes that, um, you know, that kind of riskiness out. So again going to just glue this down now i don't need to be as careful with this one because obviously it's a much smaller portion now you know particularly as I cut that off to be able to tuck in so hopefully this is going to be a little bit easier to tuck in anyway oh, well it would be but this envelope's actually oh my goodness glued down that was obviously how it came from the you know where i bought it but okay so tuck that in like that Oops. like that just check that I'm on the on the fold line okay oops now you just have to be a bit careful because your envelopes can go a little bit skew if you know like mine has there so if you're not a 
you know, a little bit careful with how you're putting it in. They can go a little bit wonky. So there we go. Open this out. Again, I can take this off. And this time, obviously, I don't need to cut this off because I'm going to put glue on here anyway. So that's all fine. So just pop some glue down on that fold line. Glue around here. Like that. Okay. Squish that down. Oops. Oh, I didn't do a very good job of this. So I'm going to have to have this one, I think. Um, yeah, the other way around. Because this is not going to want to fold brilliantly, I think. No, it might do. It might do. Let's give it a try. Right. Okay. Right. There we go. Okay, so it's not too bad. I mean, I've got a bit of a ridge here, but it's not too, too bad. So again, open that out and then take my paper. So what shall I use for this one? Uh, okay, so I'm going to just use this. So this is some of my um, Rich Damask and this is the set two collection paper. So just going to pop that down like that. And again, I'm just going to use this as my guide to cut this down. Oops. My, um, uh, my scissors have now got part of that envelope stuck on them from the, you know, the pre-gum. Okay, so I'm going to get bored of that. That pre-gum was obviously pretty strong. Sometimes it's not that strong and I never really trust it, you know, to actually stay glued down. But clearly that was stronger than I expected. Right, so take this down and, yeah, pop it like that. Okie dokie. Just going to cut it here. Like that. Okay, and then just, yep. Put that down there. Okay, so then that can go in there. I'm just going to snip this down slightly because I think I made it a little bit too tall. Okay, so this one, obviously, I don't have such a big sort of space here, you know, because it was just that small envelope flap. So all I need to do is glue down exactly the same here. So that's going to be up against this edge. I don't know why I turned the envelope upside down. That was weird. Um, and then round the edge, obviously, of the paper. Like that. Like that and then again all through the you know center if you like of the actual envelope itself like that let's take my paper and pop that down like that okay so again smooth that down like that Okie dokie. Okay, and then turn it over. Do exactly the same on the back portion. Let me just see whether that's a bit tall as well. Yep. So I'm just going to cut this down slightly in terms of height. Like that. Okay, so oops. So that's this edge. Just go along there, like that. Again, just round the edge of the paper itself. Oh. And then again, all over the centre of the envelope, like that. Okay. Pop 
that down like that okie dokie right let's just smoosh that glue out like that And then again, you're going to just trim off or trim open your envelope. So straight down the edge like that. And then again, the back one <clears throat> like that. And again, you've got like those nice roomy pockets then. These envelopes are really weird. They obviously were not um you know they they were obviously not glued down in places where they should be and they have been glued down in other places so if like me you've got some weird envelopes these were just from a card making kit you might have to do a little bit of tweaking here like where the envelope you know obviously this isn't something that we've done or I've done this is how the envelopes were when they came to me so you might just have to you know tweak your envelopes slightly if you've got things like this happening but you know hopefully you won't have too many of these types of envelopes do you see what i mean it's now glued down where it shouldn't be and that's just where they've been manufactured like that oh gosh look i mean that envelope's rubbish it's literally coming apart all down the side so not very good envelopes if i'm truthful it's obviously just a bad batch but there we go and that's your little booklet so again then it's up to you really whether you want to decorate the inside you know with the decorative papers or go over with the plain paper i'm not going to bother doing that because obviously it's not probably very fun to just watch putting more plain paper down so we'll just get mass making now because otherwise i feel like we'll be here all day just doing the demo so let's just kind of relax now and have a really lovely time doing some assembly line style making and I know I say things like this um you know every week but from the assembly line style what I mean is doing all the um uh stages together you know so we'll glue the flaps in together then we'll take the decorative papers together you know because that's going to then hopefully speed up the process so let's just put them in groups of two first of all I mean, like I say, these are sort of quite, um, not necessarily fiddly, but time consuming. So I maybe won't get that many done. So I'm probably being like well over ambitious here. I've put quite a lot down, but we'll just see how we get on. So, oh, dirty envelope there. Again, doesn't matter because obviously it's going to be, you know, covered up. That being said, I will try and get the dirty part inside. So like that. You could cut your flaps down, which maybe would make them slightly less cumbersome when trying to slip them in to the other envelope. That would be another, you know, alternative or sort of another way to, you know, just simplify the process really and make it slightly less fiddly. Um, I think I have done that in the past sometimes. So, yeah, definitely you could do that. I don't know why I haven't, oh, I haven't really thought to do that now, but... Maybe I will do it with the next one of these, especially this white envelope, because it seems pretty, pretty temperamental, if I'm truthful. But there we go. So this is going to be another one where I'm going to have that ridge effect. You know, and you might just find you get different um, results, you know, just depending on the thickness of your envelopes and maybe the quality of your envelopes. You know, these maybe are not the best quality these white ones so you know the paper's quite thin which is then making them you know like misalign and yeah just not kind of maybe brilliant but it's okay so like that obviously my favorite method is probably having them with the decorative paper on the outside that just seems to be how I'm preferring them so I'm just going to go through and glue quite a few of my envelopes together. Um, for this one, I'm going to just show you what I was talking about with, if you trim your flap down, 
it might just help with making it less cumbersome to put it in. So we'll give this a try and see whether it you know, makes any difference. It might not really make any difference, but it, it may be. Well, so again, plenty of glue around there. Okie dokie, like that. Pop that in. Aha, that did make a massive difference, it's got to be said. So yeah, if you're struggling putting your, you know, getting your flaps to slide in nicely, particularly, like I say, if the envelopes are a little bit thin or anything like that, those first lot of envelopes that I used were obviously really nice, thick quality. This is a much thinner envelope, and so it was, you know, a little bit fiddly to get it to just slide in nicely. So if you have that at all, I'd recommend cutting down your envelope that you're slipping inside because that did definitely, you know, help quite a bit. Okay, and then we can obviously fold this back on itself. Like that. Okay. Right, I'm going to stop talking you through the process now. I know I said that just now, but then there were one or two tweaks that I just wanted to talk you through. So... Yeah, let's just kind of relax now and have a catch up. So I hope that everybody's week has started out well. As I said just a moment ago, this is Bank Holiday Monday. So I'm filming on the Monday as I normally do to go up for you guys on the Tuesday. So apologies first for last week. I'm so sorry that I didn't do a mass making. Um, I wasn't actually feeling too well. And I've still got a little bit of the cold left, but... I've had a couple of days where I just really haven't felt um, like I've really got any energy or anything like that. And last Monday was one of those days. And unfortunately, I kept thinking, oh, I'll, I'll do the video in a little while. I'll do it in a little while. And then as the day went by, I didn't end up doing it. And it got later and later. And I just thought, you know, I just don't really feel like I've got the energy to be sat talking or anything like that. So I'm so, so sorry. I hate not doing them. And... Um, yeah, I'm not really too sure, you know, what I would really say I've had. I mean, it's been a bit like a cold, I suppose. But yeah, just not really felt myself. And um, it's been sort of coming and going. And like I said, I've still unfortunately got it now, but different now. So I've got more of a sort of runny nose. And um, yeah, I've had quite a lot of vertigo this week, which has been really annoying. I don't know whether that's part of it or whether that was something else completely. I do sometimes get vertigo when I've been like working a lot and I had been working a lot um making those digis and I also finally completed my autumn kit which I really was making it my goal to get that out really nice and early this year because I'm often really late getting it out so you know I was determined to do that um so I had been you know bent over my laptop and sort of working looking down a lot and that definitely does cause vertigo so it could have been that that caused the vertigo or obviously like I say it could actually be part of you know what I've had um I don't really know but yeah so I just haven't really been feeling great but I mean honestly I'm you know I am fine um but yeah just just one of those things but you know more of a sort of annoyance really that I wasn't able to then just get on as normal um so yeah I do apologize anyway I hate not doing the mass making or you know anything that I've kind of committed to do it's really horrible if then you can't do it so I really apologize um but yeah so I hope that everybody's had a good couple of weeks now obviously it's been a couple of weeks and normally if there's a bank holiday I wouldn't obviously do a mass making because sometimes the bank holiday kind of gets in the way and then you know I'm like, oh no, I haven't filmed the mass making. But because I obviously didn't upload one last week, I didn't want to not upload one again today. So hence I'm obviously filming now on the bank holiday Monday to go up for you guys on the Tuesday. So what have we been up to? So, well, obviously it's still the school holidays. Um, we didn't really do anything much last week. To be honest, we haven't really done anything much for the whole summer holidays, um, you know, unfortunately. But yeah, the weather's been hit and miss again. I mean, we had like the heat wave, then we had a couple of rubbish days, then we had a sort of couple of days of heat wave again. Um, and now, yeah, last week kind of deteriorated quite a bit again. Um, 
yeah it's just oh it's been a disappointing summer if i'm truthful so yeah we haven't really done anything very much and um you know everything's obviously so expensive so we haven't really been doing anything because you know yeah just um yeah done like nothing so yeah all very boring um what what else ah i did go to the cinema with my son so um we went to the cinema on Wednesday and we watched a film called, I think it was called Trap. I keep saying Trapped, but I think it was just called Trap. It was kind of a horror. They, well, they described it as a horror. I would call it more of a sort of thriller, really. But, oh, it was really good. I mean, I had low expectations and the first, like, I don't know, half, well, probably half of the film was a bit like, mm, because it was in a concert, sort of like a teenage kind of concert, you know. And I mean, obviously, as an adult, you're like, kind of like, oh, this is quite, um, you know, not necessarily my type of music or anything like that. And it was just dragging on a bit. And I thought, oh, the whole film's going to be like this. Anyway, it kind of then moved on from the concert. And, oh, it got really intense. And, um, yeah, my son, he also said to me, oh mum it's it's really good isn't it you know really intensive so yeah it was good film obviously we didn't take my daughter because you know it was mm, i think it was a 15 might have been an 18 but i'm pretty sure it was a 15 um so yeah it was just my son and i who went um but we quite quite enjoyed it um well we did enjoy it yeah we did we both said oh wasn't that you know an intense good film so yeah, that was um, one night we did that. And then my daughter and I, we went out with a friend of mine. So she invited us. Um, so she's recently um, split up with her husband as well. And she invited us with her sister and her sister's um, daughter to go and watch that film called Twisters. Now, I don't know whether that's actually a, like a remake of, you know, Twisters, the other film, or whether it was just just another one i don't know i mean it had the same logo you know like the same font um i don't know i wouldn't really say it was a remake because it didn't seem the same film although to be <laughs> to be fair it's a long time since i've seen that original one anyway that was pretty good the only thing was we were meeting them at the film was um the 7 15 showing which oh my goodness that's super late for me and I know I talked about um when I went to the theatre earlier on this year and went to the I think that was the seven o'clock showing and you know my friend and I we were both like fast asleep well not fast asleep but you know trying not to be fast asleep um and I said then oh note to self you know don't bother going to anything that starts after like 6 30 because it's just pointless but my friend had invited us and because I felt really guilty that we've done like nothing for the, you know, the whole summer holidays, I just thought, oh, you know, should really kind of, should go to that. Now, my daughter doesn't really like going to the cinema. She doesn't really like films anyway. But I asked her if she would like to go. And of course, the fact that there was another little girl going, she was like, oh, yeah, you know. So, yeah, so we went to that. I have to say I did doze off once or twice, um, but not too badly. Hopefully nobody much noticed, although my daughter and her friend did, you know. Um, so, yeah, but anyway, it wasn't too bad. I didn't miss much of the film, but uh, it was quite good. I mean, I'm not big on sort of those disaster weathery type movies. Um, you know, they've been done a lot, haven't they? And uh, yeah, so, but it, it was quite good, quite good. I mean, I wouldn't say it was as good as the film Trap that my son and I saw, but it was you know a completely different type of film so yeah it was it was quite good and she she enjoyed it and obviously she made then a little friend you know um my friend's sister's daughter they were only a year apart in age so you know that was quite nice because they were able to exchange i don't know snapchat numbers or details or i don't know whatever you exchange to be friends on snapchat so they've kind of been in contact since and things so that's been nice for her um so yeah that was that was one evening last week and then oh gosh I'm going to just trim this down because again I'm struggling to actually put this in so just you know just make it slightly easier uh so yeah that was one evening last week and then 
are on top of that so because i haven't been feeling too brilliant i have been just you know laying around a lot kind of crafting and you know just on my laptop like i said and um i have been binge watching something on netflix it's called accident or the the accident um i don't know how old it is actually yeah i don't know how old it is but well quite quite new i suppose yeah probably anyway it came up as a you know recommended or something and um i thought oh, i'll give it a try oh my goodness it's so good so it's just 10 episodes and um yeah i think i'm up to episode eight and i've literally been watching it kind of every you know every chance that i've had i've i've watched more of it it's really been good so it's pretty horrific um what happened you know what the accident is and i don't want to say too much because i don't want to spoil it for people but um yeah basically it involves a bouncy castle you know full of children and um yeah it's it's really good and then it's got the fallout from that accident and it impacts so many people's lives in all these different ways and uh yeah it's like got corruption going on and you know oh there's like sort of an affair and you know all these different things and um i mean it sounds like really rubbish but it's it's really good and yeah it's quite gripping it's quite quite um good now i can't actually see to see what time it is oh my goodness can't see whether that says 31 or i'm not sure it could even say 51 so i'm going to stop there um and cover some of these because i feel like we've not covered many uh oops the paper's slipping off my lap again so yeah anyway very good and um really been yeah really been enjoying it so i'd well recommend that if you're looking for you know something to watch that definitely has been very yeah very good right okay this is my um new autumn collection papers and um yeah i'm currently kind of making my autumn journal and have got a launch video which will be coming out soonish um but i probably want to get on with the journal first so it's you know completely kind of done really so but yeah this is one of the background papers there's obviously the background papers um you know some with like autumny animals and things like that so you know they'd only be suitable for like an autumn journal but there are a few like this one which are just gorgeous papers that would be very universally useful so um yeah and this one i really do love these kind of blacks with the florals they're really really nice so i'm just going to cut down my papers and things now oops and then we'll um glue them down so okie dokie uh yesterday just took Bo for a walk so I walked down to um Costa and then my son came and met us at Costa and we just had like a Costa outside because unfortunately um dogs can't go out uh, can't go out can't go into Costa so once or twice we've smuggled her in it's really naughty I know but yeah we've smuggled her in because oh, I hate not taking her um so we've smuggled her in once or twice but yeah I mean on the whole they're not not actually allowed in there so we can only really kind of get away with that you know like if they're quite busy and maybe they don't notice you know and she's obviously she's titchy though so we can just kind of like tuck her under our arm and then just keep her sat like you know on our lap and nobody really notices her um obviously you wouldn't be able to do that if she was a big dog but yeah anyway walked down to um costa and met my son there and then um I bought Bo a, I think they're called the Puppuccinos. So yeah, very cute. And um, oh, she loved it. I mean, basically, it's just a cup of squirty cream, literally just a cup of squirty cream, and it's fifty p. But 
Oh, she absolutely loved it. She was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe my luck. I'm here having, you know, a cup of squirty cream. I mean, can't be very good for her, obviously, but I guess it's okay if she just has one every now and then. So, yeah, that was like really cute for her. And then um, yesterday afternoon, um, so my daughter and I went to a barbecue at my friend um, Steve and his wife, Sarah. They had a barbecue at their house. So we went to their house for a barbecue. And I have to say, I mean, it wasn't nice weather, really. Well, I say that, it was a strange day. And I had managed to actually sit in the garden for um, a little tiny amount of time before. Sorry, that was my um, pinks and lilacs pale lace collection. Um, paper so yeah sorry I did mean to mention that and then I'm going to do this one so this also is a new paper and this is my um, music frame toppers so yeah really love these and this one um, is quite nice because it's a portrait actually I'm going to do this on the brown envelope uh, it's a portrait um, uh, dimension you know portrait shaped paper which is quite nice to have some portrait papers so yeah um but you just get two background papers and the rest are frame kind of toppers and i may use one to actually decorate one of these so you'll see them obviously when we do that yeah anyway so um my daughter and i we went to a barbecue and um it was really nice and there was just a few people there and um, yeah it was really really nice and although it was cold we sort of wrapped up you know ready for the sort of colder weather and um yeah the food was really really nice and yeah just had a really nice evening so we got there at like four and we you know left there at sort of half eight so it wasn't kind of too late or anything you know especially for such a lightweight as myself oh that one's just right to go in half especially for a lightweight like myself so that was really handy and really good so yeah but oh it's such a shame honestly to you know have such miserable weather I mean at one point it looked like it was going to rain and we were like oh you know I think it's going to rain in a minute but the weather it held out okay so yeah we kind of were able to actually have the barbecue but yeah it was really nice so yeah I always kind of find barbecues or sometimes perhaps I should say find that barbecues they sort of smell better than they taste um but yeah last night it was it was lovely lovely food right uh this is again this is my pale damask the second edition of the pale damask collection papers oh and please excuse the back this is my new frames um uh papers that i've popped into my shop so and these are like frame die cuts so and again i have used them quite a bit already and i did film a video using them but it may be some time before it goes up i'll have to sort of see there we go Oh, now, I just want to um, mention, by the way, I saw a brilliant video from the lovely Barbara over at 49 Dragonflies. Um, and she was talking about how YouTube channels are dying. Now, always a bit sort of uncomfortable talking about things like this. Um, you know, because obviously I feel, especially in my case, because you were so amazing last year, um, you know, when I was really, really going through a terrible time which I am still aware that I haven't given you an update um well I gave you a brief update immediately after that I'm going to have to um save these two for later so I'm going to get gluing these papers on now because otherwise I think I'm going to run out of time to actually you know do many of these so yeah we're going to kind of just get on and kind of like glue these down now um yeah I always feel a bit uncomfortable especially because you know you were so amazing last year and um yeah I am aware that I need to do another update obviously I did an update at the time and thanked you all so very much because you literally saved my skin basically um so obviously there have been quite a lot of um developments and things and you know yeah but I mean yeah I I will do an update um soon 
I, yeah, I just kind of feel it's a tricky situation. Um, so, and I'll talk about that obviously more in the update video when I finally do one. Um, but going back to the wonderful video by Barbara. So she touched on something that has been, you know, very much on my mind recently. And it's one of these really difficult things. And especially because, like I say, I feel so very, um, like obligated and indebted to you all anyway that I feel kind of like awkward to, you know, to ask for anything else, basically. Um, but Barbara did touch on this and I'd just like to kind of um, reiterate really what her concerns were. Is, um, you know, and I found it very reassuring that Barbara also, you know, and I'm so sorry if this sounds a really selfish thing to say, but, you know, that Barbara was also experiencing the same thing that I am because, you know, I think when you have a YouTube channel, it feels very, um, you know, very personal and very kind of isolating. And so you feel like you're the only person who's experiencing these things. So, you know, I feel my channel is not really doing very well lately and my videos are not getting a very, you know, big um, amount of views um, and all of that kind of stuff. And you know, I have obviously started recently saying, you know, I'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up and, you know, that kind of thing, which again, I don't find that comes very naturally to me. I don't really like having to ask for thumbs ups or comments or anything like that. But equally, you know, as kind of Barbara sort of said, you know, the thing is, we're offering these videos as a kind of, you know, effectively free and, you know, we're then trying to, you know, make a living from this. And, you know, we obviously, this is our, our job and our business. And, you know, then obviously what happens is your videos seem to then lose their reach and they're not kind of going very far and, you know, not getting an incredible amount of views. And it's really worrying. And, you know, she kind of summed it up by saying, you know, our YouTube channels are dying and yeah, I mean, Barbara, if you watch this video at all and, you know, I, you know, anybody else, um, I did comment obviously on that video saying, well said, Barbara, you know, and I'm so relieved that I'm not the only person who's experiencing this and feeling this. But it's just one of those really difficult things because without the engagement, you know, the hitting the likes, the making the comments, you know, that kind of stuff, the channel doesn't get picked up by YouTube's algorithm. And, um, you know, then it doesn't get a far enough reach. Your videos don't get shown to many people and don't get picked up, you know. And so it's then a sort of spiral, a downward spiral, because, of course, if they're not really kind of reaching many people, you know, of course, then you're getting less views, you're getting less subscribers, you're getting less, um, you know, interest and all the rest of it. And that all has a knock-on effect to every other thing. Um, a, it's obviously, you know, very sort of disappointing demotivating and all of that kind of stuff because you know you put a lot of effort into a youtube channel and you know it's really um yeah very upsetting i suppose when sort of things tail off and you know it's not kind of doing so well it's very very worrying and obviously you know i know that barbara is her main source of income too and you know, you're trying to kind of pay bills and things with a dwindling channel is also very worrying. And what happens eventually, you know, that channel will close, you know, because obviously you're going to have to get a proper job because you're not going to be able to make ends meet with the, you know, the lack of engagement and the lack of reach and all of the rest of it. So, I mean, we've got the most incredible supportive community here. And, you know, I mean, oh my gosh, I couldn't have been more... um uh, aware of that, you know, from the support that I received, obviously, from you amazing ladies last year, when, like I say, you literally saved my skin, um, you know, at the most stressful time, you know, ever. Um, but, you know, the, it's not kind of like a, um, oh gosh, what can I say? I, I I hate talking about things like this. It feels so uncomfortable. But yeah, I mean, basically just, you know, having a 
YouTube channel and things, it is a constant thing. So, you know, kind of, we're obviously constantly trying to upload videos and then, you know, if they're not getting the reach and they're not going out to many people and things, you know, they're just not going to obviously be sustainable um, long term. And yeah, I just felt very relieved that actually Barbara had kind of brought it up a, that I wasn't the only person who was experiencing this on my channel, but that somebody else was. And B, that somebody else had kind of brought it up as a conversation because, you know, it's, yeah, it's quite scary and very upsetting. Um, and, you know, we're going to end up kind of like struggling to carry on, I guess, you know, um, longer term. So, you know. And like I say, I mean, we do have the most incredible community and that would just be such a shame because obviously a lot of people, you know, and there's obviously so many incredible content creators out there and things. And, you know, I get that. And, you know, I'm not kind of trying to say, oh, you know, watch my channel over somebody else's or anything like that. But I think equally, you know, we all need to be supporting one another because eventually you know the community will kind of shrink because there won't be the growth you know amongst all of the channels and you know kind of that type of thing so yeah it was just kind of one of those things so i really sorry to ask for more but yeah i mean please please you know and not just on my channel but on everybody's channel you know try and leave a thumbs up try and comment you know and that really does help to increase the reach and the you know long-term sustainability of the channels going forward and um yeah just yeah thank you Barbara for bringing it up because it is you know a really difficult subject to broach and you know but equally something that you know you can't just kind of ignore and it you know it just carry on to dwindle because obviously eventually it's yeah and I think there's a perception you know that amongst YouTubers and I saw another person actually um she was a crochet um channel and I can't remember her name I'm afraid but I will try and look up the video and um put the link below but she also did an incredible video sort of saying similar things really and you know it's just one of those kind of like tricky situations where I think people think, you know, that if you've got a YouTube channel, you're earning a fortune and, you know, it's all fine. And, you know, the channels just flourish and go by themselves. I mean, that's just so not how they are. I mean, you know, they're very, very hard work. There's one or two people who maybe their channels just um, grow like, you know, wildfire. That is not the commonplace thing for most people I think most people it's very very hard work to try and grow your channel and um you know they need constant work and constant um nurturing you know and just because you've sort of reached you know x amount of subscribers doesn't guarantee the continued success and growth of your channel you know and I think that's a common misconception and um yeah, unfortunately, you know, it takes a lot of work for not a great deal of, um, you know, revenue from from YouTube and things. And so without kind of the bits on the side, like your Etsy shop or, you know, like my website and things like that, you know, it just becomes unsustain unsustainable. And um, yeah, it just is one of those tricky kind of subjects, but, you know, possibly needs talking about a little bit more. And, you know, especially because obviously, you know, we're not kind of a gamer um, niche or anything like that, where it's really attracting a lot of views. You know, I mean, we're quite a small niche. You know, I think we're, we're the loveliest niche and, you know, we've got the best community, <laughs> you know, but we're not the biggest um, community and things. So, you know, without kind of being able to grow within, you know, what's quite a small community anyway, then obviously it will just become unsustainable. And um, yeah, it's, you know, it's kind of sad and also quite worrying. 
Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Barbara, for obviously bringing that up as a topic. And, you know, I mean, share below. Do you have a YouTube channel? Are you perhaps, um, you know, what would on the outside be considered, you know, a bigger YouTube channel? But maybe you too are noticing a sort of drop off of, you know, of views of, um, yeah, that um, engagement with your your videos and things like that you know and it is really hard you know it's quite hard obviously coming up with things all the time that are going to be of interest to people and you know obviously it then becomes a sort of catch-22 because the more you're trying to then generate more interesting videos then the less interest that you're getting the more worried you're getting and so perhaps the more rubbish your videos are you know is my experience you know because obviously the more worried I feel the more horrified I feel and the more, you know, kind of panicked I feel, maybe, you know, maybe the more kind of harm I'm then doing. So, yeah, share below, you know, what's your experience if you have a channel and, um, you know, what's your thoughts generally? I mean, you know, yeah, just um, did you watch Barbara's video? And again, I will try and remember to link that in the video description below. But I'm sure that many of you have seen it because there was a lot of um, comments and what have you on there. So, I mean, to be honest, I probably shouldn't really have just addressed it on this video. I probably should have done a dedicated video to this. But, you know, maybe maybe we'll do a dedicated video to this another time. Right. OK, so let's um, move along from that now. So, OK, so we've got one, two, three, four. Five, six are completely um, decorated. Whoops, that's one of those envelopes that's uh, falling apart a bit there at the corner. I probably have got that situation actually on all corners. Oh, maybe not. Oh, maybe not. Well, that's good. Uh, right, so let's now gather something to decorate this with. So I brought along a few different things. Um now make sure we use so these are from my hydrangea um die cut type pieces so i've got those uh and these are my lavender journal cards and toppers as are these and these are my music um toppers which actually i did oh i thought i printed some off and no i haven't oh that's annoying because i've also got these in a larger size but anyway right let's just go for one of these shall we uh right I might just take I'm going to do this one now I'm going to tear this so we'll see how we get on with just tearing so yeah these are my music themed um framed die cut pieces and yeah just really love them I have to say and I've been using them like mad I only put them in in the middle of the week and uh they're just so pretty, aren't they? And really different. So, oh, not on there, obviously. But we could have it on here. Oops. Yeah, on here, I think. Or we could even... These come also in a larger size, and I had printed them off in a larger size. But unfortunately, they have been printed on the paper rather than this thicker paper, which I'd rather use the thicker when I'm you know doing a sort of topper piece really so yeah I'm going to just do it like this instead so let's just ink around here a bit oh and I just want to say thank you to everybody who's placed an order in my um shop recently so either my website or my Etsy shop I do appreciate it so 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 much um and yeah I will be putting some more things on my um shabbydabbydoodar.co.uk website soon um so within the next few days hopefully i'll do another bit of a restock i have been busy um making things to put in there as well so yeah do keep your eyes peeled because hopefully it will go up soon um now just having a look now i've got some of my paris collection papers which have obviously got some green on there I'm just wondering what I could do. Hmm, maybe there. Oh, this is tricky. Right, let's take this down. Okay. Hmm. 
maybe put it like that I think oh my goodness how pretty does that look so I will just oops we'll just ink this up a little bit there we go. okay I can't believe that I've put my autumn kit in already and you know that we are literally coming up to autumn I called it autumn is upon us um or autumn's upon us which I mean the irony because actually the last few days have felt like autumn's upon us but when I put it in there I just thought I can't believe I'm actually even talking about autumn already but yeah where has this year gone it's been like the craziest year ever which is so awful isn't it I just can't believe how fast the time flies it's like oh my goodness you know literally this year feels like it's just been a flash a literal flash you know where has the time gone I've no idea right I'm thinking like that now I also have got some butterflies here so oh I've got a green one that's quite cool and I've also got a well so pink it might be more lilac -y, but let's give it a try Mm. Okie dokie. Okay, so these are my um, uh, pale butterflies or pastel they might be. I can't remember now what they're actually called, but I use these all the time, literally all the time. Oops. Now, where do we want to have the sari silk? I'm not sure. Uh, definitely want to have some lace. And again, just looking around on my desk to see if I've got any lace buried somewhere that I can just oh, pull in. Of course, I can't now see any, which is really annoying. Oh, I've got this pink lace. I'm not saying this is going to go, but... I just thought, oh, it might. Oh, dear. Well, I mean, potentially. Let me just slip this down. Let's give it a try. Okay. Let's just see. I mean, it's quite bright, it's got to be said. So, yeah, I'm not really sure. But, you know, like sometimes it's sort of, let's not do the obvious thing. Let's do the the non-obvious thing. And then what we could do is have like some sorry silk, maybe just down the edge or like that. I, d I can't, yeah, I don't think I'm loving that um, pink. I just spotted this. Yeah, this feels a lot safer. I, yeah. What was I thinking with that pink? I mean, what is wrong with me? Just check if that's up the right way or the wrong way. So I said to my daughter, um, just before I started filming, I said, I'm just going to quickly do a video. I said, what would you like to do today? She said, nothing. So I said, well, give it some thought while I'm doing the video. You know, I said, we can't just do nothing on the bank holiday Monday. I said, how about if we take Bo down the beach, you know? Because, I mean, it's not it's not a beach day, but, I mean, definitely it's a kind of, you could take her for a walk on the beach type of day. Oh, no. Oh, she's coming to that age, you know, my daughter, where she doesn't really want to do anything. I mean, she'll be 11 in January. And they just get to that stage, don't they, where they're kind of like, oh, everything's an effort. I don't want to do anything. Which is a shame, isn't it? But... I mean, having said that, you know, the weather's not great, so I can't really blame her. And hey, I mean, if she doesn't want to do anything, I can just obviously do some more work. So that's fine. But I think I should drag her out somewhere, force her to do something. Right. I'm going to put it like that, I think. So that looks really pretty. So let's just pop this down. Okie dokie. Yeah, and I'm also I'm doing some more um, of the folio, build your own folio, the skeletons, folio skeletons, um, because I had one or two people message um, at my 
shop um you know on my website saying you know that they'd missed out and was i likely to do any more so um yeah i've started working on them they obviously take quite a while to make and put together so yeah they're not in there yet i haven't finished them yet but hopefully they'll be in there quite soon as well so i mean they're just they're just really a nice um product really because yeah and i said this obviously when i did the restock video you know they're the type of thing that definitely you know when i perhaps first seen folios that i thought you know they seemed really intimidating to make and i would have absolutely loved to have been able to buy a skeleton you know and have all the fun of decorating the folio but without the kind of stress of building the structure of it so yeah hopefully um you know hopefully you guys think that they're a nice product like i say i mean i have had obviously a few people messaging saying so yeah hopefully that means that they're well received right i mean that's weird i wouldn't have necessarily thought that color would really go but just saw those i mean weirdly it goes better than the bright pink doesn't it let's just see and i do have the trim packs um in my shop at the moment so yeah and the trim packs and i say this all the time they contain the black bling as well which obviously you know lots of people message about the black bling so i love using these um little trim flower trims as well they're just so gorgeous right might go for like a butterfly overload here so yeah let's just see if we want to have this one as well oops i see something was stuck on my scissors that's just dropped off onto the floor okay oh, dying for a cup of tea not had a smoothie for a few days i'm having yogurt with um like frozen blueberries oh that's not the right color butterfly is it it's too too purple yeah not that one let's just see Oops. oh i've got this green one maybe not maybe this one might be better and if you're wondering how you would use these so you can bind these into a journal um so that's one way to use these and that's the way I think that I did see Crafty Cat use it originally, which was obviously a few years ago now. Um, so I've used them bound into a journal before, which is, you know, a really fantastic way to use them. Um, you could obviously not put decorative paper on the back, not, not even put paper on the back at all, um, and glue them into a journal. So that would be another another way to use them. Oh, where do we think? Can I put it up there? Uh, that would be another way to use them. So if you weren't to put the paper on the back, you could put decorative paper in here. So you could have a decorative side, a decorative side, and maybe a journal side or something like that. And you could then obviously glue them onto a page and there'd be like a little, you know, side loading pocket book. Or, of course, you know, you could bind some pages in here and make them into a little mini journal. Or you could just paper clip them in just like that. So, um, yeah, different ways that you can use them. So that brings us to a close. I am so sorry that this has dragged on a bit longer than um, anticipated. So I do apologise. So we completed six. Obviously, I do have other ones left to cover so i've got two more left to do so um yeah not too bad because they are a little bit on the time consuming side but they're definitely worth you know worth doing and persevering with so i really hope that you love them um you know really hope that you enjoyed the video and yeah i'd really appreciate it if you leave a comment below if you give a big thumbs up to this video that would be amazing and yeah thank you so much for watching everybody i hope you have a you know great few days and i will see you guys in the next video Thanks so much then. Bye.